Okay, this is Rob, and um, basically I told you I was going to make a screencast that would go over everything that we did in the Fab Lab today using the Fab Modules and the milling machine. So uh, rem the things to remember about the milling machine are that you have to zero the uh, z-axis yourself uh, and be careful with the end mills so that they don't drop on the floor and break. And what else? I guess uh, don't you don't need to tighten the collet a whole lot. It's just uh, tighten it with the allen key and uh, don't go crazy and um, I think just the double stick tape and a little bit of hot glue for keeping the wax to the table. Aside from all that stuff that's physical and related to the machine uh, we want to use the fab module software there's an icon in the dock on the on the left uh, in the uh, fab lab computer but here I'm just going to type fab that works the same way in a terminal window so I'm going to choose the uh, STL mesh and I want to make the output go to the MDX 20 mil. I'm going to load my STL file from the desktop. Um, this isn't, I think this one's too small, but I don't, yeah, I think it's, I think this is small. So it'll just show up as being faster than yours probably will. But um, basically, uh, I'm going to choose millimeters rough wax and then say make PNG. So nothing appears here and it's it's because I'm looking at the wrong side so I'll just choose Y and then make PNG again and I want to be looking at the top. You can see the gradation here uh, which is showing that it goes from white which means don't cut anything that's our wall around our mold to this darker gray which is cutting this deepest part of the mold and uh, there's some variation in there that's to reflect this 2% or 5% draft whatever I did. And then you can see there's a bit of a fuzziness around all these parts too, and that's the same thing. There are drafts in there as well. So um, the next thing I'll do is just leave all of this alone because it looks correct. Negative 25 is the lowest that it'll cut. If it showed any number bigger than that, you'd be in trouble because it would be cutting into the bed. Uh, this is the diameter in millimeters of an eighth inch end mill, and the rest of this we can leave alone. So I'll hit make path, and there's what it's going to do. Um, that's the cuts it's going to make. So I could move now to uh, some place uh, on the on the chunk of wax. Hit move here, and the machine will move over as long as you're not in view mode. And then you can uh, put the end mill in and just kind of let it drop down uh, and and uh, until you see some some wax fuzz show up. The other way to do it, which I didn't show in class, is to just kind of let the end mill fall and hit the wax, you know, or just kind of touch the wax, and that would work too. The only thing is sometimes um, you have to—it's a little more fussy because you do want the end mill to be uh, in the collet far enough, but not too far. I said about a quarter of an inch of the shaft should be showing when you tighten the collet. So either way you want to do it is fine, but just make sure that the end mill looks like that when you put it in the collet and you either want a little bit of fuzz to show up when the end mill is spinning and that shows you're zeroed out or at least get it to touch the the wax and um, and not make the fuzz either way works remember that if you move the uh, machine subsequently let's say it was five and five and then you decided okay I, I've got my zero out point and I've, I've zeroed it out but actually I have to move way over a hundred millimeters to start my cutting so I don't ruin someone else's work and then uh, you hit move realize that um, it'll only be reflected here normally there's a send it button here if you send it it's sending whatever the last RML file was that got made so if we're at 5 and 5 we move and then we make RML and then we go back and change to 100 and we move and we just go right to send it it's sending the old file which started at uh, an origin of 5 and 5 so the thing to remember is anytime you move you should probably make RML again and uh, and then you can see right here there's the send it button um, so if I moved, I would hit move, make RML, and then send it again. So this is telling me it's going to take 10 minutes, 10.8 minutes, um, and I could run through this. That would be uh, great and be done, and then it's time for the uh, finish pass. So I'll go up here to finish, and I'd probably want to change the end mill di diameter, unless you're doing your finishing pass with an eighth inch end mill. So 1.5875 would be half of that. That's the 16th inch end mill. And um, really the only things to change here are flat end or ball end, depending on which one you're using. 
don't change the clearance that should stay at 1 8 of an inch you could double check these numbers again this should all look the same as before the overlap however we do want to change this time if you just do 0 0.5 you, we saw that it doesn't look that great we, we want a higher overlap so uh, 0 0.5 means that it's going to overlap the previous pass by 0 0.5 inch uh, sorry by 50% uh, so I'll see if I hit make path here I might take a moment but it's going to um, to show that it makes this kind of back and forth movement across the whole thing and then another back and forth movement in the other orientation so there's the XY uh, sorry the XZ and the YZ orientations uh, or directions so um, <coughs> basically if we increase this to 0.9 we'll see all of this get a lot denser because it's actually uh, from one pass to the next, it's actually overlapping the previous one by 90%. So turning that up to 9.9 will make your model look a lot better. We saw that today in class. So I'm going to leave it at 0.5 just so I can um, show you something else, which is uh, kind of an important deal. We don't want the 16th inch end mill to to come in and try and cut this uh, area next to the wall. And the reason for that is because it's just too tall. So if we look at the length of cut of that end mill, it's very short. And um, if we try and cut this corner, it'll end up rubbing against the wax in the wall and it'll just be bad. So what, what I've uh, done in the past is basically just kind of go behind this software's back and update this PNG file and then do make path uh, if we eliminate all of this stuff out here from the image, then it won't try and cut it. So uh, anywhere where it's white, it's not going to cut because that's kind of the highest point of the wax. So it's saying to leave it alone. So let's um, let's go and just go into this files program. We'll find, look, right there. It's probably in the home folder. You might have to switch to that on the FabLab uh, computer. But here is uh, Fab Mod mygamepiece.png looks the same as this so I'll double click on it All right, in the fab lab when you double click it'll open with GIMP which is what we want and here it is I didn't get the toolbar so uh, the toolbox so I'll do control B and now the toolbox appears so the way I did it before was that I started out by just using the paint bucket I have to make sure the foreground color is white and it is 255 255 255 and if I do the paint bucket, what you'll notice is that it kind of obliterates a bit of my I'll undo, a bit of the uh, gradation here. So it ends up kind of losing my draft and just makes a, a quick drop off. So one way I could do this is to um, to turn the threshold way down to like zero, and now it doesn't seem to do it so violently. Uh, but maybe, um, I think Daniel mentioned this and I just kind of was like, yeah, 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 but actually it seems like a good idea. If you just make a really kind of loose rectangle around this and then uh, select invert and hit delete, of course if I hit delete right now it's going to use the background color. So let me undo and switch those and then delete. Uh, this would work great. So that means don't cut anywhere over here, but do cut you know, a little bit of the, the mold's trough um, just in the area of my game piece. So uh, this will work out great, I think. If you get too close, it's seen, I couldn't really tell, and I didn't try it on the mill, but it seemed to uh, maybe ignore a bit of the draft. I, it was hard to tell. So on screen, it didn't look very good. So I think a better suggestion for you is to just kind of leave some gap between your, um, your uh, game piece and, and uh, the box that you make. And then uh, you can GIMP has this really handy feature to save the model or to save the file, you just overwrite. So I'll overwrite and then go back to the fab modules and hit make path again. It should be quicker this time and um, there it is. So instead of trying to go all the way out to the edges of the mold, it's uh, it's basically just like pretty close to my to my game piece. You can see here uh, it is, you know, it's just a little bit that it's going to cut out. and. Um, and that's about it. So I should have uh, just now done make RML. You would see that the time right now is a lot shorter because it's not having to uh, scan all over this area. So if I hit make RML, it says four minutes. So that's pretty small. I think yours will be longer because I'm, I have a suspicion this is an old model that I made and it's a little smaller than yours is. So um, either way, it'll save you time and it'll also save trouble from having that small 16th end, end mill. Uh, trying to carve out this really steep, tall slope, which it can't do. So make sure you go through this extra step. It's important. 
Um, I think that's about it. If you have any questions, email me. Uh, if you're doing it on the weekend and e you want to email me, I'll probably be able to email you right back so, uh, so you can keep working. That's, that's worked in the past. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.